Newport County Board of County Commissioners convening at 9.01. Um, Dallas, please uh, roll call if you could. Commissioner Thayer? Here. Commissioner Richardson? Present. Commissioner Wilcox? Here. Next, if Roger, if you could please a prayer and the pledge. Let us pray. Almighty God, our beginning and our end is with you, and Lord is your children. May we learn to be kind, tenderhearted, and submit, submit to one another out of love, and we be kind and compassionate, working for your kingdom here on earth. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Roger. Okay, at this point, approval of the agenda. Do we have any changes? Yeah, I'd, I'd recommend we approve the agenda as presented with the addition of uh, the Rush Creek Transmission Line Master Road Agreement to the consent agenda. And under action items, our supplemental appropriation for this year's budget just we move that to our last since it'll be a public hearing since versus an hearing. action item second okay. second all in favor aye 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 all right we've got the consent agenda uh, i move that we accept the con uh, consent agenda agenda as amended second all in favor aye aye, aye. All right, we've got um, elected officials, department heads, and staff reports. Do we have any any comments? I believe. Wade, how are you? Hopefully, this is yeah. This is on. Okay. Well, this is my last BOCC meeting. Uh, as I will be leaving the county. So I just wanted to make a few Albert County has a lot of dedicated employees. It has 
dedicated elected officials. And I think that's one of the strengths of the county. Um, I think during my time here, we were able to build a strong team. I hope we can obtain a strong team again. I do want to especially thank former Commissioner Kurt Schlegel and former Commissioner Robert Rowland for the opportunity they gave me in this position and for supporting me. I do want to thank especially our former county manager, Ed Amon, who I consider a friend and <coughs> definitely a strong supporter. And I think he's a, a, a very major reason why the, why the county is currently where it's at. So I'm not going to forget Elder County. I'm not going to forget the employees here. I want to thank everyone for their support. Um, I hope I've learned from the experience. I hope I'm a stronger person because of it. I'm going to remember fondly a lot of the time I had here in Elder County. I am going to remember the mountaintops and not the valleys. I'm going to try to go on with my life, not take myself too seriously, hopefully, have some fun in my life, and my immediate plans are to enjoy the summer and to climb some more 14. So I appreciate the opportunity, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your service. I appreciate it very much. Wait, thank you very much. Some folks coming in. Hey. Morning, Commissioners. Morning. Hey. That's a lot. Um, Sheriff, I work at Sheriff's Office. Um, first of all, I'd like to just publicly thank Wade. You've been an incredible ally and you've helped us out a lot. There's not too many attorneys. I know we're like some phone at 3 o'clock in the morning, but you've done that for me. So thank you for, for helping us out and always having my back. Um, Commissioner, I just want to give you a on the overpopulation of the jail. Um, you know, we've been talking about this for some time. We're currently running anywhere from 5 to 15 over our max population on a daily basis. Um, as you probably may or may, may, or may not know, uh, jail was built in 1984 for 20 inmates. Around 2004, we doubled that capacity. Um, so currently we're running a contract with Douglas County to house our, our additional inmates. Um, that contract comes with a price tag of $54 today. So our current expenditures are running anywhere from $300,000 a day or $1,000 to $10,000 a month. Um, if you kind of forecast that out and look at where, where I think we're going to go, uh, I think a good example is last year we filed two, felon, or we filed two felonies during the month of June 2016. This year we filed 24. Um, so that's significant. So those people have not been sentenced yet. Um, so I expect our population to significantly increase. How's uh, our deputy that uh, was involved in the He's uh, in the accident? Ended up not being a break. Good. Um, good. Ended up with a total vehicle out of it. And an individual with multiple felonies. And um, the same court yesterday. I think that got off. Could you describe what happened? Yes. Yeah. 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 And de and describe what happened. Yeah. Shane, our felonies this year? 24 felonies were at, right? We did that in June. In June? Yeah, just in so. We typically run about 70 to 90 a year. Where we've done historically. Okay. 
Okay. Just in the month of June. So now at, an, at, at this year, our count is close. What do you have? Well, on the year, I yeah. don't have that. I apologize. That's okay. Yeah. How does it compare to you? Know, would you by no chance know how does it compare to like Douglas County or, or Apple County or anybody else? Do you? Uh, everybody's up. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so much so that the legislature is uh, starting a, a special session and talking about the crowding issues. Um, we're not going to be able to see it by any stretch of the imagination. Um, okay. It's brought around the state. Okay. Um, one of the things that we've seen that has really impacted it is I've got a couple inmates. Um, one individual, he's got 38 months. Or county jail is not built for, for long term storage. It used to be that once you hit a day over a year, and go to prison. So with some changes in the judicial branch, changes with some legislation, now we're starting to see people get sentenced to long term, long term. So obviously that's a little population problem in force. It's a significant problem as people we're seeing, you know, we're holding these guys for such an extended period of time that, that it's making it Is there a consistent theme related to the increased uh, felonies? Is it drugs or is we're it a lot of that. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Chief. Any other? Any more? Nope. All right. At this point, we have open public comment. This is for any comment that is off the subject of anything under discussion or action items, because you will have the opportunity to. Uh, comment on each one of those. So if we have any open comment, do I have anybody? No? Nope. Okay. Discussion items. Start. Presentation of the 2016 audit results. Draft audit results. So who do we have? Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, citizens. Good morning. Thank you much. My name is Rodney Rice. I'm a part of the accounting firm of Louis Brown. <clears throat> With me is Matt Marino. He played the role of manager on our audit this, uh, this year. I want to start by thanking you for the trust and confidence of putting Louis Brown. Uh, serving the public sector is a very large part of our practice. So we are very much appreciative of the opportunity to uh, serve the uh, county commissioners and the citizens of Alabama County. And quite Um, in just a few minutes, we'll talk about the results. 
spend about two, three minutes kind of just discussing how governmental financial statements are put together so you can have some context and understanding of what's included in there, what's not, and kind of how to interpret and read what you see. So you have several different sections. The first section of note is the management discussion and analysis. This um, precedes the financial statements. It's right after the table of contents. As, it, um, as the title denotes, it's management discussion and analysis of the operations of the county for the year. Um, it's management supposed to provide context and background on what happened for the year, what were some of the results, what were some of the causes of some of the results, and such. After the management discussion and analysis, you have your government-wide financial statements. So that's a full accrual basis of accounting. That's where you'll see the 
that that hit the metrics, and I won't go into what how we determine that or how the federal government tells us to determine that. But those are the two programs that that we looked at. Uh, the FEMA grant will also have um, the internal uh, issuing an unmodified report on the county's compliance uh, with the grant provisions of the FEMA grant. Uh, the TANF grant. Thank you. 
slides, um, page 8 through 14, is our auditor uh, communications. So on page 9, we talk about the reports that we issued. As Rodney mentioned, we issued an unmodified on the financial statements. And then we issued a report over an internal control over financial reporting. And then we also issued an unmodified report over FEMA and a qualified opinion over TANF. On page 10, when we talk about the plans for the timing of our audit, as part of our engagement, we provided management and the board with an engagement letter that defines what our responsibilities and what sort of services we would provide. Um, that uh, letter was provided in November, and we performed the engagement to comply with that letter at that time. As part of the audit, we do have to look at the accounting policies and practices of the county. Um, so there, if you look at the significant account, accounting policies, and those are described in note two of the financial statements, if you do want to look at those in more detail. Um, the county did have to implement two new accounting standards this year. Um, that was GASB 72 and GASB 77. So GASB stands for Governmental Accounting Standards Board. These are stand, standards that are issued as a profession and um, you really don't have a lot of choice to implement them. There'll, there'll be certain years you have to implement them by, and these were the two that needed to be implemented this year. GASB 72 has to do with fair value reporting regarding investments. It does not change the value that was reported on the financial statements in the past. It merely provides more footnote disclosure of how those values were provided. Um, GASB 77 has to do with tax abatement disclosures. Um, tax abatement disclosures would be, um, an exa a great example would be if there was a huge development that was going to take place and for whatever reason the county decided to abate you know, a certain dollar threshold of property taxes or sales taxes or some sort of other tax back to that developer, that would be, need to be disclosed in the financial statements. We did not know any significant abatements other than the routine residential abatements that are done every year and have always been done in the past. So we know that no transactions that lack authoritative guidance and we know that no transactions that were reported in a period different than when they occurred. As part of the audit, we also look at um, estimates. Estimates are inherent in all financial statements. Certain, certain estimates are in virtually every set of financial statements. The main estimate we look at with regard to the county is depreciation. As I mentioned earlier, we looked at that and we found that to be reasonable. We compared it to other like counties. We looked at um, what the county's plans for the assets were and such. And we found that to be reasonable based on the current funds. We also look at the disclosures that the county makes in the financial statements. And so we just highlight the 
The next several slides are just some uh, uh, fiscal health um, observations we'd like to make. So as part of a project that was undertaken by the Office of the State Auditor several years ago, this first started in school districts and was expanded to counties and municipalities the last several years. Um, the Office of the State Auditor came up with seven different metrics that they measure, and they measure this for all counties throughout the um, state. And basically, the thought being is that you are below the certain threshold that they've set for the specific metrics. You might get some additional assistance in budgeting or operation of your entity from the state in order to make sure that the services do not uh, lack in the, in the future. So the first one we looked at, which is the cash to liabilities ratio on page 15. So this basically um, measures the county's ability to pay the, the near-term liabilities of uh, the county. And so you're looking at your unrestricted cash and investments as compared to your current liabilities. And as you can see, um, ever since 2014 going forward, the county is above the uh, minimum benchmark that's required uh, by the Office of the State Auditor. So um, the county is trending in the right direction and it's continuing to trend up. And The next one is the operating margin, which is on page 16. This is a measurement of the, mar the margin that is produced by the general fund. So it's your revenues less your expenses. Um, if the general fund is operating at a loss, the general fund typically is the most major um, mm -hmm. operation of the county. And so if that was operating at a loss, it could be um, indicative of poor financial health of the county going forward. And so as you can see, you're above the benchmark for that since uh, 2012. Every year after 2012, you're kind of above that. And on page se uh, 17 is another fiscal health ratio, and that is the unrestricted fund balance ratio. And so the thought being on this one is the Office of State Auditor said that they would like to see most entities have reserves that are sufficient to uh, uh, sustain operations for at least two months without additional um, funding. And so, as you can see, in the past, the county was definitely below this. Um, the county has uh, surpassed this threshold in 2016, and so we've issued a, a yellow light, you know, trending in the right direction, but caution, because you have had several periods of below um, the recommended rate of uh, reserves. So if we get that uh, another year with it above the... Uh, the baseline there, will that take the caution light away? Gives us a exactly green light. Yeah, we just <laughs> we can take care of that today. <laughs> and, and I want to, these are recommendations. No, the state auditor is really just wanting to monitor and make sure that there's yeah. no No, no, I understand. Oh, okay. I just, it's, it's good. Uh, this is no. a good yeah. That's a good way to depict it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that line is somewhat arbitrary. Like that. <laughs> so, uh, that's okay. Really no, that's. But I wanted to make sure you knew that I saw the light. <laughs> And then on page 18, we just have some foresight. So, you know, as auditors, we spend a lot of time looking at historical information. We like to try and make sure we look forward in the future and see what's coming down the pike and make sure we can get ahead of it. And so there's two accounting pronouncements that the county will need to um, adopt in the future. The first one is GASB 84, which has to do with fiduciary funds. And you're just going through and evaluating what would be a fiduciary fund, what would be not a fiduciary fund. And so a fiduciary fund would be if you have money that's not necessarily yours, and so a great example for the county is the county collects all property taxes for all municipalities within the county, and then you remit the money out to those individual cities, towns, or special districts. Those are some of the information that's typically housed in a fiduciary fund. There could be pension funds and other things that at other counties that would be in your fiduciary fund. The, the GASB has issued a pronouncement that they would like all of these to review what their county forms fiduciary funds. And the next one is GASB 87, which has to do with leases. Um, this would change the accounting for leases. So if you're familiar with the accounting of majority leases, historically there's been a treatment of two different types of leases. You have an operating lease and a capital lease. Operating leases do not necessarily show on the books as a liability and asset. They're really usually just disclosure and footnotes saying that you need to pay money in the future in order to retain the use of that asset. So they're this, treated as an expense item. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Um, in the future, this would eliminate the um, operating lease option and all items would be a capital lease. This will not be a big impact to the county because the county already makes um, mostly utilization of capital leases at this point, but it would probably bring comparability of county operations to some other entities that have used more operating leases. They would converge them together and you'd be, be able to better compare them more easily without mm -hmm. having to dig into the shortcuts. Right. You could always compare, but it would take a lot more gyration. A lot more so, other than that, that concludes um, 
when you made your uh, 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 give us a, an idea of what you were going to present here the other day, uh, the modified part in uh, the TANF, uh, we asked uh, specifically: uh, Is are we talking uh, because it is modified for that little section? Is is it a big number or a small number? And you gave us the impression as a relatively small number. It's, it's a relatively small number. Again, uh, those uh, thresholds are again determined by the federal government. It's a relatively <coughs> What are the threshold limits before it's reported? What are the numbers? Do you so, you, if, if, so there's a, a concept called question costs. And so if question costs had exceeded $25,000, we would need to report that. It did not exceed the $25,000. Okay. Okay. And so um, we, there's two concepts. There's known question costs, things that we found in our sampling, and then we also have to project. Okay. If we were to project and come up with a number greater than It just, yeah. had, it just so happened to be the files we pulled this year had dollar amounts of X, and the files that were pulled last year had dollar amounts That's of Y. Okay. Okay. The conception was the same. Okay. 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 Right. And by the way, um, I miss Jerry. Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah she's here. Right there. I recognize Jerry, too, in her department. Um, we, we, we pounded on her pretty hard, and uh, she, uh, she was very patient with us, and her team was, was responsive. And, and they, they really have a follow order. And, and these grants are not easy. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of detail to get attention. So, um, you know, you know, there is a, a, a modified report there. We do recognize all the hard work that, that goes into that. We're happy, we're happy to be a resource and help in the time. Um, I can tell you, you know, as a part of the Blue Brown, did not look at an audit as an auditor, had an auditor against auditing. We're all going in the same direction. We're just not different sides of the road, but the, the ores should be going in the same direction. Because at the, at the end of the day, we're really, we're not serving management, quite frankly, we're not even serving the community. We we're serving these folks out here. And that's how we look at it. So we view it our job is to come on the side and help get compliance and financial reform and everything uh, and play our part to, to make that as a quality of product. Mm -hmm. I have to say thanks because throughout the whole process, you were keeping us advised, you were kind of interacting with us. It was, it was really good. And you, your whole crew. Professional group really appreciate it. So yes, it does. Yes, it does. For, no, I don't have another question. I just, uh, for the benefit of uh, the citizens that are here, if I listen carefully enough, you basically gave us a clean audit report. Will be given us a clean audit report. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> I just like to, one. I, I do thank it because it does give us a lot of confidence. We know we're not perfect. We know that it's good to know where we need to focus. And we, the county, had developed a, a habitual relationship with our previous auditor, so it's always good to comforting hear. to see a new set of eyes looking at the same standards. Yes. To, and it doesn't look like we had, doesn't look like we'd missed things in the last years. Yeah, and and the details. The detailed language in the audit report is important as well. There are some, there are some um, parameters in there. And, and the two parameters that are in there, as far as what we're assigning on, the level at which of assurance that we have. It is not an absolute assurance. To do that, we have to audit every transaction that happens every year. Well, it took the whole year to do it. It would take us the whole year to, to audit. <coughs> to Matt's point, we do take samples, and, and we draw conclusions about entire populations based on statistical samples that we pull. 
but it is, it is a material, materiality issue, so we give uh, reasonable assurance versus that absolute that I just talked about, that there are no uh, material misstatements in the financial statement. So that, that part is important to understand as well. Uh, there's, there's for decades and decades, there's been what's referred to as an expectation gap in the audit world is what the, the general public thinks an audit is versus what an audit really is. Oh, you must have looked at every transaction during the year, and that's not the case. But to the extent that we do look at things, we use that to form our opinion. So that's important to understand. So we use the reason for the word the audit is not the But that's really the, the But luckily, we audit at least five counties, so we know where counties have their difficult areas. And so we definitely focus our time and do a risk based approach based upon that. So we just are in our I don't have any questions. Public comment? Questions? There's not. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you very much. We will proceed with issuing these reports all in final form with your permission to do so. Yes.